Alright, so I want to take a look at solving some quadratic fractions. Um, so these are rather nasty looking equations where we see a quadratic, it's also a fraction, and we have to solve for x. And before I dig into my solution for these, I need to kind of give you a little bit of a mathematical background if you don't remember this or um, have never heard of it before or forgot that you've heard of it. If I try to divide something by zero, and if you have a calculator nearby, I dare you, pull it out and try it. What does it say when you put in 4 divided by 0? You can pause the video if you want, but 4 divided by 0, it's going to probably tell you, like, maths error or undefined or something that makes you really worried that you've done something wrong, which in fact you have. You cannot divide by 0. This is what we call an undefined answer. So it's not possible to do this. We cannot divide by 0. So that's the same with a fraction, remember fraction being the same as divide, 3 over 0 is the same as saying 3 divided by 0, so we can't do that either. That will also be what we call undefined. And same, if you have a bunch of stuff divided by 0, it is still going to be undefined and a disaster to try, so we cannot do it. Now, mathematical theory as to why that happens, I'll leave that to you and Google to figure out. Um, but accept it as it is for this problem. Um, if we try to divide by zero, we've got a problem. So I want to take a look at my situation here in the first problem. I've got an x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 10 all over x plus 3. And because I know where this is going, I'm just going to go ahead and remind you what we just talked about two seconds ago. Dividing by zero is a bad idea. So for what value of x can I not have a solution for here? How do I make the bottom of this zero? So what I mean is, how do I make x plus 3 equal to zero? Well, if I make x equal to negative 3, negative 3 plus 3 would equal zero, and that would be a zero in the denominator, and that would be a bad idea because we cannot divide by zero. So, now that we've thought about that, I'm just going to make a little note for us here that says not x not equal to negative 3. But we cannot have x is equal to negative 3 in this problem. Alright, so set that aside. You can ignore it for a moment if you want, and you'll just see where it comes back to us later on. So, let's solve this. I have a fraction. That annoys me. I'm thinking, okay, that's a bunch of stuff on the top divided by x plus 3. So what's the opposite of dividing by x plus 3? Well, in fact, that would be timesing by x plus 3. So if I times the whole top by x plus 3, my x plus 3 on the bottom and my x plus 3 on the top will cancel, reminding yourself again that 3 over 3 is equal to 1. So those effectively cancel to become 1, and what I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other side of the equation. So if I simplify this, I get x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 10x plus 3. And going ahead to expand that out, I get x squared plus 8x plus 15 is equal to 10x plus 30. So now we're kind of getting there. We've at least not got a fraction, but we still have a quadratic. So remind yourself, when you're solving for quads, you need to set it equal to 0 first and then factor it. So this is not equal to 0. Let's figure out if we can fix that. Most of my stuff is over here, and my x squared is positive over here. So I might think if I subtract 10x, both sides, and I subtract 30 from both sides, I'm going to get x squared, and 8 minus 10 is negative 2x, and 15 minus 30 is negative 15, is equal to 0. Okay, first thing's done, it's equal to 0. Next step would be factoring it. So, what times is to 15 and adds to negative 2? probably a negative 5 and a positive 3. Adding to negative 2, times into negative 15, and set these both equal to 0. x is equal to negative 5. Sorry. Wrong way. x minus 5 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. And plusing 5 to each side, I know that x can be equal to 5, or x can be equal to negative 3. Um, backtrack for a minute. What did we say here? The x could not be negative 3. 
So by showing this, we've gone through this full solution set, we've worked out that these are two possible solutions, these are possibilities. So we need to check. Can I actually use both of these? And what we need to check is check the denominator. So, my denominator cannot equal zero, so we do not want zero on the bottom. So I could have x plus three, and in this case, I could have 5 plus 3 is equal to 8. Well, that's not 0, so that's okay. x can equal 5. But over here, if I had x plus 3 and I substitute in that negative 3, I get negative 3 plus 3. That's equal to 0. Bad idea. So it cannot be negative 3. So x equals 5, only solution would be what you would write. So it seems like a long drawn out process, but part of what we're doing here, and people might try to show you shortcuts for this, but I want to really emphasize this is proper mathematical technique in the way that there are sometimes potentially two solutions. There are situations where when you do simplify this, both the negative three and the five might be valid solutions. So we need to find both of them and then double check. Okay, so let's take a look at another problem. Um, this is going to get interesting, but let's give it a go. Automatically from the bottom, well, let's go back to this first problem for a second. Given this idea that I've got in my head now, that I know my bottom can't be zero, I might always look at the denominator and ask myself, okay, is there anything I know x cannot be? And in this case, well, it's harder to tell, um, because it hasn't been factored already. You could factor that if you want and think about it. So. I might think in the back of my head, well, that could be x plus 3 and x plus 2. So we know that x cannot equal negative 3 or negative 2. So that's something that you could think of. But if you're not sure, just keep reminding yourself that you need to check your solutions at the end. So let's get into this. I have a fraction. I want to get rid of my fraction issue. So that whole thing is being divided by, so if I do the opposite and times by all that junk, and do it to both sides, well, timesing and dividing by the same thing will equal 1, so I'm left with x squared minus 9 is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and expand this out, so timesing that 7 through to everything gives me 7x squared plus 35x plus Okay, now I don't have my fraction anymore. My next step then would be set it equal to zero. It's a quadratic. we got to work on that. And some of you might always be inclined to move things to the right or left-hand side as a preference, but pay attention here. There's seven x squareds here and one x squared here. I'm going to move in the direction of more of them but to avoid a negative number. So minus x squared here, minus x squared here, plus nine, and plus nine. Doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. I get 0 left over. 7 minus 1 is going to be 6x squared plus 35x, and that gives me plus 51. Okay, and now the good news is that's equal to 0. The bad news is you've got to factor that. And you might be thinking that I'm a horrible person for giving you this problem because those numbers look horrific and there's no common factor between all of them, but it's good practice. So, what do we do if we can't have a common factor? Let's do this. Again, that's because I see there's a 6 here instead of a 1. So 6 times 51. Well, 51 times 6 doesn't really matter. Equals 306. And now I need to think about what times is to 306 and adds to 35. Well, I have no clue. So, given that it's a bastard of a problem, I'm going to just start doing a prime factor tree here. I think that's divisible by 3, so that's 3 and 102 will get me 306. I might try dividing this one by 3 again, um, because I know 1 and 2 make 3 total there, so it'll divide by 3, and I'll get 34. And 34, I can divide by 2, and I get 2 and 17. So remember with prime factor trees, what we've done here is we've said 3 times 3 times 2 times 17 will equal 306 but it doesn't matter what order we do those in. So let's think, can I combine those together into two different numbers? 
that when you add them, you get 35. So 17 is already pretty big, and if I times it by 2, and use these two first, I get to 34, and 34 plus 9 is not going to get us to 35. So that doesn't work. Let's think about it another way around. I'm thinking 17 is already a big number, what if I leave it alone? What if I combine these first? What's 3 times 3? That's 9 times 2 is 18. 18 times 17 is still equal to 306. And what's 18 plus 17? A magic number 35. So now that I know that it's 18 and 17, both positive, I'm going to rewrite that middle term as 17x and 18x. Leave the first and last terms the same. And it's still equal to 0. And it doesn't matter what side of the equation you write the equal to 0 on. Alright, now that we've split that middle term, next step would be to factor the front. So I see they both have a common 6x. Leaves me with x plus 3. And over here I see some awful numbers, but um, use this as a hint. You should hopefully get x plus 3, which means, okay, well, I need to take out the 17 possibly. Try it out. What's 17 times 3? Oh, hey, that's 51. So I know that I can pull out a positive 17, and that'll leave me with an x plus 3 still equal to 0. Now my x plus 3 is common on both of those, so I can put the stuff at the front into brackets. I've got 6 plus 6x six plus 17. x plus 3 is equal to 0. Okay, next step then would be solving for each of these, so I'm going to set both of them to 0. 6x six plus 17 is equal to 0, or x plus 3 is equal to 0. Minus by 17 on both sides, 6x equals 17, divide by 6, divide, sorry, equals negative 17, divide by 6 on both sides, x is equal to negative 17 over 6, or x is equal to negative 3. And now I need to check my solutions, so check my denominator. Alright, so checking our denominator, we saw up here that we had x squared plus 5x is equal to, or x squared plus 5x plus 6, and we need to make sure that that's not equal to 0, so let's check it out. Um, and two ways you can do this, you could think ahead and use the factored version that we've done already, if you want, or you can use the original version, I'll show that both ways, so try it out. Our denominator is x squared plus 5x plus 6, if I try x is equal to negative 3, that's negative 3 squared, plus 5 times negative 3, plus 6. That's 9, plus a negative 15, plus 6 is equal to 0. Nope, not allowed. We cannot have x equals 3. Sorry, x equals negative 3, so that's not a solution. Check the other one. I have negative 17 over 6 squared, plus 5 times negative 17 over 6, plus 6, and that just doesn't look like fun to solve, so I'm going to suggest, hey, we do know the other one as well, so let's check this out. x plus 3 and x plus 2, if I factor the bottom first, and let's plug this in. Negative 17 over 6 plus 3, and negative 17 over 6 plus 2. These things are being times together, and I can tell automatically, well, the only way to turn this side of the equation into 0 is to have x equals negative 3. So I know that's going to be okay, it's not, a non, it's not a 0. And over here, the only way I can get a 0 is if I had negative 2 plus 2. So that one's okay. You could force that through and do all the maths, but I can just see right now that this one's not going to be equal to 0. So it is going to be okay. So we would say only solution is x is equal to negative 17 over 6. And that would be our answer for that problem. So, it might seem like a lot of steps, um, but that's okay, especially if I give you super nasty ones to factor like that, but they should be easier, hopefully. But, um, your step again is if you've got two solutions, or even if you've only got one solution, you need to double check the denominator. Do either of them make the denominator equal to zero? And if that happens, we can't have it. So again, here we'd say negative three, not possible. My only real solution here was going to be the negative 17 over 6.